research, I came up with something that was really cool, and that was a virtual tour to the Brookfield Zoo in Illinois. Um, and coming across that, I found out that we can do a virtual tour to, uh, you know, um, and see some of the animals there. So today I'm going to come up with um, three different videos. And the first one that we're going to start viewing is the one that has the um, reptiles in it. So I'm going to share my screen over here and then I'm going to show you guys, um, you know, this video of uh, the box turtle. Um, and this, the, the topic of this video is bringing the zoo to you, screaming hairy armadillo and box turtle. And after we Good morning, this, face. we're going to do some activities that are related to the zoo. So I'm going to uh, get my, I'm going to minimize myself and we're going to go over this video and then we're going to do some activities. Look and welcome to Bring the Zoo to You here at Brookfield Zoo. My name is Craig and I'm an animal care specialist at the Hamill Wild Encounters, Hamill Play Zoo and our ambassador program. And today I wanna to talk to you guys about two really cool different animals that share a similar adaptation, armor. So to do that today, I have animal care specialists Olivia and Jill, and they're going to show us our animals, Raleigh, our armadillo, and where did he go? Touche, <laughs> our box turtle. So starting over here with Raleigh, this is a screaming hairy armadillo. So this is one of the around 21 species of armadillo. This guy is much smaller, not the smallest, but one of the smaller species. They do let out this really high-pitched scream when they're threatened to scare off predators. Uh, in my personal opinion, is actually pretty cute. If you can watch him eating bugs, he's kind of tooling around right now. These guys come from South America, kind of in Central, around Argentina and Bolivia. They come from kind of multiple different biomes, but one primarily would be dry and arid, so a desert, someplace where they can burrow. That's probably their main defense to try and get away from predators. So you can find Raleigh on exhibit at the play zoo. He's about 10 years old. And if you guys come during the summertime, you've probably seen him during our play zoo chats uh, for our armadillo chat. He's very popular. Kids are able to actually come over and pet, pet him and feel his carapace, which is something we're going to talk about in a minute. So these guys have a really good sense of smell. So he's, right now he's actually scent marking a lot because this is a table that we've used other animals on. So he's really exploring. He's kind of he's pretty enriched right now. But they do have a really good sense of smell. They are omnivores, so they're gonna eat plant material, uh, but they really like insects. They can smell insects up to six inches underground. And if you can see his little feet underneath his carapace, they have really strong claws. So they're really good at digging for those bugs. But they also use those claws for uh, burrowing and hiding. So now to talk about, you know, the main thing that makes him an armadillo. The, the word armadillo actually means little armored one. So these guys do have a really cool adaptation, an armor adaptation. So if you look at him, on his face he's got a lot of what they're called scoots. So they're made out of, um, it's bone plates, and then the top is um, keratin, which is basically our fingernails. And then so, so they have armor on their head and face, and then towards behind the ears, they have um, an armor section, a uh, big plate to cover like their shoulders. And then down the middle of their back, you'll see um, bone plates actually. And again, those are covered in scoots, keratin. And then the back half is a one large plate for his rear end. So those bands help make him a little bit flexible. So you can see as he's scent marking, he's kind of squishing down. Um, so, the armor on his back does protect him, but their primary defense is actually going to be to run and hide first, and then if they can't get away, they're going to burrow and they're going to flatten themselves out, because underneath them is, uh, not armored, basically, so that's, um, bare skin down there where they're vulnerable, so an animal is actually going to try and flip it over to, to eat it. So a lot of people look at these guys and they think shell or they think scales, so they immediately assume reptile. These guys are actually mammals, and the big thing that gives it away would be all those little hairs uh, around his carapace, which is why they're called the screaming hairy armadillo. So these hairs, if you look at Raleigh, he's 
got a lot of blind spots. He's not like super flexible. He can't just turn around and look behind him. So these hairs are actually like a cat's whiskers. And it lets him feel his environment. Now he's just chilling. So if we move on over here to uh, our box turtle, this is Touche. Touche can also be seen on exhibit at the Play Zoo. He's about 34 years old, and you may remember him from many of our reptile chats over the summer, too. So, like the armadillo, these guys do have armor. They have a shell. So, the shell is kind of actually similarly constructed. They don't have um, the same type of sections or bands. It's more sturdy, but they are made out of bone plate covered in a scale called scoots that's made out of keratin. Now, one of the things that makes these guys different is that they have the top shell is called the carapace, like the armadillo, but on the bottom, they have another piece of shell called the plastron. And so the, tur the shell actually connect connects in between here, um, like a bridge, so that their shell is completely connected to them. Now, the neat thing about the box turtle is that they actually have a little line right here. This is a hinge. So when they're threatened, they can withdraw their arms and legs and head all the way inside their shell. And that hinge lets that close up completely over their face like a box. And now it wouldn't, if you had your finger caught in there, it wouldn't, you know, break anything, but you'd have a hard time getting your finger out. And it's really hard to try and open them up if you ever had, for a predator, if they ever had to do that. So unlike in, you know, portrayed in cartoons, since the shell is actually attached to this animal, they can't leave the shell like you might see a turtle in a cartoon do. So this shell grows with the animal. Um, and you can see that one neat thing about the box turtle is all these little tiny lines here are growth rings. So you could technically kind of tell their age based on that. The neat thing about Touche here is that he actually had a chunk of his shell break off at some point in his life and our vet staff had to build a prosthetic piece right there because this piece was actually jagged and he could have hurt himself along his neck or his head as he lifted up. So they built a little prosthetic chunk there so that he wouldn't do that. So you might be wondering too, this is a, a box turtle, but they're very tortoise-like. And if you don't know the difference between a turtle and a tortoise, it's just basically where they live. Um, Tur turtles are t typically semi-aquatic, so they're built to live where they can go in the water, but also on land. So their feet are a little bit different. They're more like flippers, and their shells are, are more aquadynamic, if that's an actual word, um, but it lets them swim really well and the water glides over them. So a tortoise would typically live on land. They have stumpier feet, they have bulkier shells, and they don't really swim. Now, a box turtle is a more terrestrial species of turtle. So you might wonder why is it a turtle and not a tortoise, but these guys are actually in the same family uh, as turtles and they're more closely related to a wood turtle than a, than a tortoise. So. so after talking about these two guys a little bit, you can see how they are very similar, but some of the differences uh, in their shell structure is that Raleigh here his shell is actually a lot lighter and a lot thinner, so it doesn't have um, as much protection as a as a one of the turtles or the tortoises do. So he's actually the, that makes him a lot quicker and a lot more agile, and that helps him run away. It helps him burrow faster because his primary defense would be to get away or hide before having to use his shell. The other thing too is that these guys don't have that bottom plastron like a tortoise would. So their, their underside is exposed to predators, which is why they're gonna try and dig and they're gonna flatten themselves out. So with that, if anybody has any questions about either of these animals, feel free to ask. Uh, someone wanted to know if the armadillo is born with his armor. The question is, is the armadillo born with his armor? I actually don't have to do that now because you're reading it to me. Awesome. So they are born with the armor. It's um, not fully formed yet. It's kind of like if you think about uh, with a baby and the soft spot on their skull, which a neat thing is that their bones, both the, the turtles and the armadillos, their bones and their carapace are called a dermal bone, which means they're more closer to the 
the dermal layer or the skin, and some of the bones in the human skull are actually dermal bones too. And can the armadillo roll up into a ball? That is an excellent question. So that is only true of one species of armadillo, and that's the three-banded armadillo. So while these guys and all the other armadillos can kind of arch and, and kind of curl over a little bit to protect them, they don't actually roll into a complete ball. So like I said before, this guy is going to try and flatten himself out and make himself kind of like a pancake and hard to flip over or he's going to try and run and hide or, or, or dig underground. And what do the armadillos like to eat? So in the wild, they're going to eat mostly plant material and any insects they can find. And they do have a really good sense of smell. They're actually related to sloths and anteaters. So he can f smell those insects pretty far underground and he'll be able to dig them out. Um, so here at the zoo, they're given um, an insectivore diet. It's kind of like uh, growing up insects and they get some produce as uh, a treat. But then for training, he's going to get some insects, which Olivia is going to throw out for you. These are mealworms, and he loves mealworms. Raleigh's actually trained to do quite a few different behaviors, and he works just for these guys right here. Uh, what are those hairs on his sides for? So the hairs on his carapace are actually more like a cat's whisker. So like he doesn't have the ability to kind of turn around and look behind him. So he uses those hairs to feel around in his environment. And these, this species of armadillo is the only species that have these really, really long hairs. Other armadillos might have some around their carapace, but these guys are, it's really long and, and, the, and they serve that function. So how old is the tortoise? So Touche the box turtle is about 34 years old. Pretty old man. And now these guys can live uh, probably, you know, 60 years, but they can go up to even 100. So we typically say that their life life expectancy is 60 to 100 years. And what do they eat? So these guys are omnivores, so they will eat plant material. They love to eat bugs here at the zoo. They're given lots of produce, fruits and veggies, some leafy greens. And then um, a few times a week, they get different types of mealworms, waxworms as part of their regular diet. Why are his eyes red? His eyes are red because that is how you would tell this species of turtle, whether it's a male or female. Now, there are a lot of different um, other ways to do it. You can talk, uh, you can look at their tail, compare their a male versus a female tail. The, ta the male's tail will typically be more thick and, and kind of blunt. And then if you pick up the, the turtle, a male turtle will have kind of a concave shape to their plastron and a female will be flat. So now most males of, of box turtles will have red eyes. So that's a one of the ways you can kind of tell, but that's not entirely true because um, some females could have red eyes too. It just happens. And where do they live? These guys live along the eastern United States and they can go as far up to Maine. This is called an eastern box turtle. There are other subspecies. There's eastern three-toed box turtles. There's ornate box turtles. And they, you can find different box turtles kind of all over the United States. And does the tortoise bite? He can bite. So while he's very comfortable being handled, he's been doing this for many, many years, there's always the chance that an animal with a mouth could bite you. So these guys don't have teeth, but they do have beaks and they do have a pretty sharp bite. Any other questions? Yeah, how much does he weigh? That is a great question. Let's <laughs> pick him up and find out. Um, so we weigh our most of our animals, we weigh our animals in grams or kilograms. I would say he's probably a little bit over a kilogram, so maybe about 2.2 pounds or so. But I, I know, I, I lift weights a lot, so I can, low weights apparently. So. Um, and who's Touche's favorite keeper? Touche's favorite keeper is probably Jill, right here. Um, but that's actually a good question. So most reptiles don't typically have the capacity or the care to, to identify or like certain people. So for, our keepers here, Touche's used to be, uh, Touche and most of our snakes and turtles are used to being handled in a certain way. So as long as um, any of our newer staff handle Touche the way that we've been handling Touche, he doesn't really care who's doing it. And how fast can he go? 
These guys can actually move pretty quick if they need to, but Touche doesn't usually need to. They're pretty slow. I say quick because you'd be surprised at how fast they move, but it's still not very fast. So they say that these guys move, what is it, like a... Box turtles will move like, move like a mile radius in their whole lifetime, but, so they should stay kind of where they are. How old is the armadillo? The armadillo is, we're not positive, but we can guess about 10 years old based on his size where we got him and how long we've had him. And so he's he's getting a little older now, but he's still a very, very active animal. He's well taken care of and uh, he's pampered. So <laughs> how long can armadillos live? So this species of armadillo, uh, typically 14, 15 years. In the wild, not so much, I'd say maybe even less than half of that. Uh, and that's due to things like predators. And here at the zoo, under professional care, Raleigh has really good room service and maid service. He has excellent health care benefits. We have a vet hospital right on site, so whenever he needs to go, he gets to go. Are armadillos rodents? Armadillos are not rodents, so they are more closely related to sloths and anteaters. But the, so they're just a type of small mammal, omnivore. Yep. All right, well, that's all the time we have for today. Hope you guys learned some really cool things about two of my favorite animals here. Thank you for joining us. Again, come see us tomorrow. and. looked into, um, you know, how to, we went into the zoo setting and we looked at two animals and the two animals that we looked at were uh, the armadillo and the, the turtle. So I'm going to show you some activities that we can do. So right here on my iPad, you see there are some pictures of the armadillo. So we can actually start to, you know, do coloring activities with these armadillo pictures. So this is like a really, really neat activity to do. There are different pictures of armadillos that you can, you know, take. You can start coloring those. Um, you can do different colorings of, you know, different types of armadillos. Um, there are all these different type of, type of armadillos um, that you can, you know, take these pictures and you can start coloring them. So this is one activity that you can do. Um, there is another activity that I wanted to show you guys, and this activity is actually uh, related to um, one of the... Um, uh, it's actually a, an activity that you can do with, um, you know, like reading about a turtle and then answering some questions in regarding to a turtle. And I am going to um, show you those activities in just one second. Um, this is a really, really neat activity that you can do um, in regards to, um, you know, things that can be done with a turtle. So just give me one second. Recording. So the activity that I wanted to show you was this activity right here. Um, this is an activity that you guys can do with... Um, reptiles and it talks about what are reptiles so this is like a little bit of a higher functioning activity so it's a story that you can read about reptiles are kinds of animals turtles are reptiles snakes and lizards are reptiles too crocodiles and alligators are also reptiles reptiles are animals that have scaly skin they stay warm by lying in the sun their bodies do not keep them warm like ours do reptiles can get too warm they move to the shade or in the water to cool off. Reptiles also get too cold. This can make their bodies slow down. When they are cold, they cannot move very fast. Some reptiles hibernate during the winter. When it is warmer, they begin to move around again. Reptiles lay eggs. When the eggs hatch, the babies do not need their mothers. Baby reptiles, they catch their own food. They also find safe place to live. They have to take care of themselves. So this is like a little story about reptiles. And then there are questions that you get, they can answer in regards to reptiles. You know, there are uh, choice, uh, multiple choice questions that they can answer um, in regards to them. 
you know, and these activities, they can be modified as related to them. So this was just, uh, you know, an example of something that can be done, you know, with the clients also. Um, so just bringing different activities over there by watching, um, you know, the animals. And then after that, you can do some activities with them. I hope that this um, activity helped you guys to do something at home with, uh, with, with the clients um, and with the kids. Um, have a nice day. Recording.